The Nigerians spent billions of naira schooling abroad, further piling up pressure on the nation's foreign exchange. Statistics from the CBN shows that Nigerians spent about $4 billion on foreign education in the past eight years. Even in technical and vocational education, where Nigeria can boast of some level of competence, many still prefer to study outside due to issues such as strikes and cultism. With thousands of Nigerian students now back home as a result of the war in Ukraine and now Sudan, how to end the large number of students going out to study is again in focus. We have in the studio the director of Auchi Polytechnic, Dr. Salus Umar, to look at these issues and what can be done to ensure that Nigeria's education system becomes more competitive and attract foreigners. Thank you, Dr. for joining us. Thank you very much. I know that we cannot totally eradicate uh, schooling abroad. Uh, a number of us uh, are beneficiaries of that. But then uh, it's causing a lot of capital flight. What can be done to retain these dollars in Nigeria? Well, it's simple. I think everything lies in the hands of the government. If we have able and willing government, they will be able to eradicate it fully. All that is supposed to be or needed to be done is to make sure that we make our institutions vibrant. We make our institutions as good as other institutions in the world. I can't imagine uh, a Nigerian living in Nigeria and to say he wants to go and study in Sudan, he wants to go and study in uh, Togo, and so on and so forth. When we have actually very, very excellent universities. But the problem is just one. That is, the government should be, should be uh, seen to be ready to go by the rules. Let the government go by the, by the extent rules of having to fund education very well, having to also stick to their promises. Because most of times you find what causes this influx of people outside the exodus we are having is because you can't afford to keep your child that's supposed to have graduated for four years, for, for seven, eight years. Hmm. So because of that, most of us, we decided to say, ah, instead of uh, keeping this child until when he grows gray here and still in the university or polytechnic, let him just go and spend four years outside and come back. But when you look at the quality of education, mm -hmm. you will know very well that Nigeria has very high quality education, especially when you look at the federal institutions and some of the state institutions as well. They have qualified uh, lecturers, they have equipment, and anything you can think of. One is the quality, the other is the standard. Mm -hmm. We'll look at the two, uh, the quality and then the standard. Which is a major challenge, especially if you look at the fact that, you know, students some years, they spend as high as eight months. In case, mm -hmm. you know, that comes to mind is just last year where ASU was on strike. Even ASU, the Polytechnic Associations as well, you had your own bout of strike. But at the end of the day, let's not forget, Nigeria is a nation where in the 70s, we used to see Europeans come mm -hmm. down here yeah. to study, especially for professional courses like the engineering, the medicine and all of that. So you are in the system. Talk to us about the challenges that you face why we're seeing the fortunes of the educational sector really go down the drain year in year out and how we can fix it yes i don't want to believe you absolutely that the educational system has gone down to the drain well if you look at the, if you look at uh, <laughs> uh, all of the, the, why, the why data do you hold that position? All, no, the surveys, all of the surveys no nigerian university comes in the top 1,000 in the world. Amaka, maybe we should, let's... Top 1,000, <laughs> not even 500, not let's 100. See. So that tells us something, doesn't it? When, when I said, I don't believe in what you said absolutely, you would have allowed me to actually say something. Carry on, me, carry on. I was giving you the data yes. as well. Are you now saying that, or do you really believe that our institutions are as bad? I can tell you something. I have been able to go to Ghana, for a conference, I went to Togo for a conference, I went to Kenya for a conference, 
And I have seen the quality of education there. I have seen what even the lecturers are presenting, mm -hmm. which cannot actually beat what we have here in Nigeria. So why should I, why do you want me to believe you that uh, our education is going to the drain? No. Well, the, so the, problem, the, problem, so the problem we have is what I've told you. Right. The problem we have is that government should be holistic in funding this education, government should be holistic in standing by the rules. Doctor, you see, we understand your point, yeah? Uh, but then we're, we're not benchmarking against uh, a country like Togo or Ghana. Let's start with our colonial masters. Let's start with the Britain, okay? Now, uh, what, what about the competitiveness of our graduates in the global market? Talk to us about that. Let's, let's, let's look at, you, you can't compare Nigeria with the uh, countries that are already developed. Compare us with our contemporaries, and then we cannot talk about it. I would first of all, first of all, because first of all, first of all, first of all, you are comparing them to the, our own colonial masters that came and even put up educational system for us that we drilled from. Because educational system that was actually been placed by the colonial masters, if we had actually stand by it till now. We wouldn't have actually got ourselves in the mess you are saying we are. Okay, mm. so that's why I asked you the question, even if you do not agree with a part of my question. I asked you about solution, because at the end of the day, I'm mm -hmm. a product of the public institutions from primary all the way to the higher institutions. And I know the quality then, and compared to when my father went to school in Nigeria, mm -hmm. the quality then, it, you can't even compare. So that aside, so what is the solution to take us back to our glory days? What's my question to you with regards to the Nigerian educational sector? There is possible solutions that we can actually think of. One of the best solutions is for the government to think and know that there are things that are supposed to be put in place that yet the government has refused to. One of them is actually the, the, the funding. Government should be up and doing in funding these institutions. And apart from the funding, you uh, look at it from my angle. 2021, there was ban on employment. And when you go to these our universities, you find out that we are all, all our tertiary institutions are highly affected because there is retirement, there is debt, and so on and so forth. And because of ban on employment, people will not be able to employ good graduates any longer. So uh, most of the universities and polytechnics and colleges of education are actually all we have to do with uh, part-timers to teach because there is serious burn on employment. So that is one aspect of it. Uh, the other aspect of it is the proliferation of all these uh, so-called uh, private institutions everywhere, every village you see, or you go, you, you, you okay. meet a university there, you meet colleges of education, you meet polytechnics that are employing even undergraduates to teach graduates. So if we can actually holistically look at the educational system, abide by the laws, we wouldn't get ourselves into this mess. And I will still believe and disagree with you in totality that the, the, the educational system in Nigeria has actually gone to the drain. We have uh, so many examples, or I have so many examples I can give you, of our graduates who will finish their first degree here, who will finish their HND here, and go outside there and came back with the best results. So saying that it has actually collapsed, I won't agree with you in totality. Okay, let's let's also okay, look at... Sorry uh, to, to the, correct okay, that, okay. what I was talking about is I was comparing it to the glory days. I didn't say it was completely wrong or bad because we have thousands of young Nigerian minds in the university. So just to clarify that, mm -hmm. so you okay. can go ahead. I said the glory days of the 70s where we had people coming in, that's not what is obtainable. So we see to you Nigerians now, yes. go yes. to even war-torn countries just to get good quality education. So, so 70s, over to you. 80s, how many, how many private institutions do we have that time? I get you. Now, okay, let's look at the uh, discrimination between uh, the, uh, our BSc and our HND. What do you make of that? <laughs> I don't know what to really say because I have actually discussed about this issue on AIT. I told the whole Nigerians that 
there is no way you can just say Dr. S.S. Omar is not intelligent or cannot deliver what is deliverable without giving that S.S. Omar the chance hmm. to actually exhibit himself. That is what is causing the problem now. Nigerian universities, all, all, the, all the, 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 the employers have already put in it at the back of their minds that they give preference to certificates. And this preference they give to certificates causes a lot of damages to the bot, uh, sorry, uh, to, to bot uh, economic growth and otherwise. The dichotomy should be removed. How do we remove this dichotomy? Two things should be done. One, give this graduate a fair chance to compete. Two, allow these polytechnics that are well established to actually offer uh, postgraduate courses. Mm -hmm. By the time you're not know, allowed a polytechnic to offer master's degree in uh, their technical education and so on and so forth to PhD, you see that the issue of dichotomy will automatically go. Okay. But if you now decided to just stagnate the polytechnic by just awarding a uh, higher national diploma, of course you have already that created the dichotomy. Well, okay, so where are we now? Because we have to wrap up this conversation soon. Because I do know that um, there was a bill that was passed in the National Assembly to actually end the discrimination between a bachelor's degree and a na higher national diploma. But where are we with regards to that? The, the, the issue of... Uh, a policy to be stated is one <laughs> and for it to be implemented is it's a another. different <laughs> one altogether nigerians we know very well the legislators the executives are fond of just bringing up policies that they just drop on the table and left the policies so you there. don't believe this policy is the silver if bullet we want, need to see that end to the discrimination yes it will not end the discrimination certainly right. the only way this discrimination can be ended is allowed the polytechnics to also be awarding higher degrees. By the time you allow the polytechnics to be awarding higher degrees, the issue of discrimination will go. go. If you come with your master's degree from university, I came with my master's degree from polytechnic, what are you going to tell me? Right. Of course you can't tell me anything because you have master's degree, I have. Thank you very much, Doctor. We most appreciate your time on the show tonight. Time will not permit us, uh, Dr. Uh, Salis Ushe Umar, uh, rector Alchi uh, Polytechnic, Polytechnic. Thank to you. talk about uh, cultism and some other issues bedeviling our education system in Nigeria. But we must thank you for coming on the show. <laughs>